You need to refactor this kind of stuff out in your code. Logging, validation, error handling, all this stuff. Move it into its own set of classes. Yes, today we're talking about refactoring again. Refactoring is the act of modifying the structure of existing code without changing its functionality. It's essential for maintaining a clean and optimal code base, and it's particularly handy in large scale projects where efficiency and readability are important. Refactoring also helps in discovering and fixing bugs, and it helps implement changes faster. In this video, I'm gonna show you one method you can use to refactor your code by identifying and removing cross-cutting concerns. Cross-cutting concerns are parts of a function or method that affect other concerns outside the immediate purpose of that function. So they're things which cut across multiple modules, and they generally cannot be neatly decomposed from the rest of the system. So some examples might be logging or security or validation or maintaining database transactions. These things are typically needed throughout an application and they aren't responsibility of just one function or one procedure in your code. To identify cross-cutting concerns in your code, go through your code base and look for functionality that's repeated across different modules. So take logging, for example. You might realize that a significant amount of logging logic is being repeated, so potentially introducing redundancy and maintenance problems around your code. Imagine how hard it will be to change where you log your debug messages to if you just had a load of console.write line um, calls throughout your code base. So login is a good example of a cross-cutting concern. Once you identify cross-cutting concerns, you want to consider extracting them into separate modules. So this means that you can achieve separation of concerns and modularization. So common functionalities can then be reused across your code base, and that reduces redundancy. If you create well-defined interfaces between the cross-cutting concerns modules and the rest of the code base, then you can ensure that changes made inside a module don't affect others. So let's dive in and look at an example, and this example is gonna be in C Sharp. So here we've got a class in C Sharp, and it's got this function on it called save to database. And inside this save to database function, we are logging something to the console. So we're calling console.write line and saying that we're saving a record. Then we're doing a little bit of validation logic here. So we're saying if the item.id is an invalid state, then throw an argument exception. And then finally, we're saving our item to the database. Now, this function here, even though it's only doing three things, it's still breaking the single responsibility principle. It's generally considered good practice to have all of the functionality of a function encapsulated in the name of the function itself. So our function here is called save to database, and yet the function body is doing a lot more than just saving to database. It's doing validation, it's doing logic. So it's not great to have these extra um, concerns inside our save to database function. So we're gonna refactor these out. And the way we're gonna refactor these out is we're going to abstract out the logging logic and the validation logic into two separate classes. So I'm gonna define those two separate classes as interfaces that we can inject in. So I'll have a debug logger, and that's gonna have a function called write line, which takes a message. Um, and then secondly, for the validation, I'm gonna have a iValidator class, and that's gonna have a validate for insertion method that can validate the item before we insert it into the database. So we've got these two instances. Let's go down and inject those into our class using dependency injection. So on the constructor, I'll put in instances of the logger and instances of the validator and we'll copy those into private read-only variables for debug logger and validator. Cool, so now down in the save to database function, we can start to use those two abstracted objects. So we can use the logger and we can just call logger.writeline instead of validator.writeline. And then on the line below here, we can do validator.validate for insertion. Uh, I forgot to actually just Sign these. So now what we've done, just by changing these two and using abstracted classes, is we've abstracted away the logic of logging and validation and put it into two separate files. And so this has made our saved database function much more focused on what it's really doing, which is saving something to a database, and it's taken away those what we call cross-cutting concerns. Um, it's also worth noting, this is C Sharp, so there's actually quite a lot of cool stuff you can do with the syntax in C Sharp. You can, take, um, you can take advantage of things like attributes. So I could create like a logger attribute here, which does all my logging inside an attribute, and I wouldn't need this line of code. And I could create a, a validation attribute here that just says um, validate for insertion. 
um, and I can take this one as well. As well. So I'd need to actually write these attributes, but I can write these attributes to use the logger instance. You can put dependency injection into attributes as well. Um, and so this is just a handy little feature of C Sharp that lets you kind of inject middleware into your functions to alleviate these kinds of cross-cutting concerns. But this is the essential principle. The principle here is that we're taking away the logic and we're abstracting them into their own classes. So refactoring to eliminate cross-cutting concerns here has a lot of benefits. It will help your code be more manageable and it'll promote reusability because you have things separated out into modules that are easy to test and they're easy to modify in isolation and then they're easy to reuse in other parts of your code. It's worth noting that like everything in software engineering, this does have trade-offs. It can increase the complexity of your code base quite a bit and it may need to a high number of modules and interfaces, like if you have all of these interfaces being injected all over the place, it is more complex. So it does require careful thought and planning to get the balance right between modularization and complexity. If the only tool you have is a hammer, then every problem starts to look like a nail. Don't overuse patterns like this, but definitely be aware of them. With continued practice, this technique can become an essential part of your software development lifecycle, and it can make you better and more confident at refactoring. So the next time you write or refactor code, I'd invite you to look out for cross-cutting concerns and give this a go yourself. So that's all from this video. Why not check out another video in this series of Refactoring by Example, which is right up here on the left-hand side. My name's James Charlesworth, and this is the Train to Code YouTube channel.